Ever since the release of The Last Jedi back in 2017 by director and writer Ryan Johnson, a lot of Star Wars fans have been very much, you know, upset with how things turned out for Luke in the sequel trilogy movies and have been actually very excited with what John and Dave have been doing with the character in the Mandoverse scheme or even the Book of Boba Fett as well. This is Mike Zero. Make sure to subscribe if you are new to the channel for future Star Wars updates. Also, by the way, guys, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support. It is greatly appreciated. Now, one major thing about Luke is that John and Dave are beginning to do the impossible when it comes to upcoming projects like Mando Season 4, the Ahsoka, uh, the Ahsoka Star Wars show Season 2 that they're pitching the Disney higher-ups as we speak, and a lot more on the horizon as well. Now, with that being said and all, we know one major thing about John and Dave is that they really do want to pay tribute to the philosophy that George Lucas created for Star Wars and how that's really going to balance itself out in the Mandoverse. Now with that being all done and said, what's even all the more exciting is exactly what John and Dave have in store for, of course, Luke Skywalker and upcoming projects, including what kind of powers he's going to be able to utilize, the people that he's going to interact with, what kind of situations Luke's going to get involved in in upcoming, you know, Mando seasons and other Star Wars shows that surround the Mandoverse era, and exactly how it's going to tie directly in to other scenarios of Star Wars Legends getting revived. So let's tap into one major thing that Jon Favreau is doing for Luke that is heavily inspired from Star Wars Legends. This is actually by far what I believe is the most shocking thing of all time when it comes to Luke in the actual current canon that's being planned. Now with that being said, all right, with Favreau and Filoni getting ready to do impossible things with the franchise and Star Wars and borrowing from Legends, the most recent big addition to the franchise that was finalized by them is set the focus on evolving Luke in a massive way. A particular scene from the script of Rangers of the New Republic, a cancelled series, was revived to be used as a flashback in The Mandalorian 4 that is set to showcase Luke using a titanic level power during the Battle of Jakku. This moment is said to involve Luke Skywalker taking down a Star Destroyer, very much like that Starkiller did in the Force Unleashed video game. The storyboard is set to include Luke wearing black robes with stripes with a hood over his head, followed by pulling back the hood and the face of Luke closing his eyes. As the Star Destroyer approaches Luke, it is firing cannons on villages in the distance on Jakku, wrecking everything in its path until Luke is set to use the force to shut down the power from the ship and begins to level it slowly into the ground. So let me just pause here for a second. Now, this is something that in the beginning, J.J. Abrams wanted to do for The Force Awakens, as well as Ryan Johnson toyed with the idea before canceling it. And that in and of itself was kind of like the overall way how John and Dave got the idea to say, hey, let's do what JJ and Ryan failed to do and never got to actually do that in the, in the movies. And let's take that idea, but make it even better. And basically what they're doing is that John and Dave are finding avenues. They're finding pathways to making Luke taking down a Star Destroyer very much equivalent of what Starkiller does in The Force Unleashed. If you guys have no idea what I'm talking about, go ahead and look up Starkiller Takes Down a Star Destroyer. It's by far one of the most amazing moments in Star Wars game history, and they are absolutely trying to mimic that. Now, given that the Battle of Jakku has many destroyers that landed into the ground, the cannon the upcoming canon, is set to fully explain exactly what happened to one of them. And that, of course, one of them being Luke taking down a destroyer. Now, let's dive into the specifics based on the finalized storyboards and why Luke is really doing what he's doing, right? Because there's always a purpose as to why Luke would use and utilize such a power like this. So on top of this, all right, with that being all said, we already know that John and Dave want to create a very specific purpose for why Luke does what he does. And on top of that, as the ship hits the ground, 
it begins to explode on impact, where the shockwave is said to have a large radius. During the shockwave, Luke puts his hand down and begins to use the force to stop the shockwave from hitting the village that he is in. Now, the entire intent for Luke utilizing this power during the Battle of Jakku was to save a village protecting a valuable force-sensitive group that the Empire was going to obliterate, one of which surprisingly is said to be Rey's mother that will be further utilized in the current canon. Now, I want to just pause here quick. We already know that John and Dave are retconning Rey's parents, both her mother and father, and exactly how powerful they really are. In the current canon that's going to be rewritten by John and Dave, Rey's mother is not powerful, and Rey's father, being the son of Palpatine, was also not powerful at all. In fact, Rey's father, if you want to call him Dathan Palpatine, his name is Dathan, uh, Dathan has no powers of the Emperor that you would think of, not even close, which is why Palpatine cast him aside and threw him in the trash, basically, is what happened. And so, what John and Dave want to do is that they want to reverse all of that. They want to make their her parents basically very powerful in the upcoming canon. And that really does give Luke a motive. It gives Luke a reason to protect them, because they could very well become, or Rey's mother in this sense, a very powerful Jedi in the future. So, about the Star Destroyer sequence, I think it's going to be a level that we have never reached before. John and Dave are really trying to reach a different level for Skywalker and what he's able to do in the Star Wars universe. Now, the thing about all of this, too, that I think a lot of fans need to absolutely realize is that when you look at Starkiller in the Force Unleashed video game, he does this in a different way. All right, he's using like both hands. Um, he's kind of pausing where the Star Destroyer really is for a second there. What I like the most out of this scenario is how Luke is able to turn the power off first. And you know what? If you guys have read the Aftermath novels, there is something that hints in there that the Star Destroyer's power begins to flicker. And it was kind of hinted at that it was Luke doing that. It was never fully said, but it was hinted at. And this could very well be the very shift that you see at the very beginning of The Force Awakens on Jakku that Rey passes on her speeder. That could very well be the one that Luke takes down in the Mandalorian Season 4 flashback scene that dates back to one year after the events of the Battle of Endor. By the way, the Battle of Jakku is the final battle of the Empire against the Rebellion. That's what the new canon is. It's not necessarily Endor, but Basically, Jack Who is the last stand for the remnants of the Empire. So overall, guys, you know, I would like to hear what each and every one of you have to say about this entire scenario between Luke, the Villagers, the Star Destroyer, the Battle of Jack Who, etc. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support, and I'll catch you guys next time. Yeah.